Hey, board gamers, BJ from Board Game Gumbo here, back with episode 53. It's season three of Gumbo Live, the number one Facebook Live talk show dedicated to board gaming. Our special guest tonight, Jason Dinger, the designer of Captains of the Gulf, blowing up there at Eschen Spiel. He's got some news for us about a very happy day for Jason and Uli over there at Essen Spiel in Germany. Gumbo Live is a proud member of Punchboard Media. Punchboard Media, check out other fine members like The Shuffle, the brand new podcast from the What Did You Play This Week podcast team, led by Brandon and a host of contributors, including yours truly. It's an audio board game magazine with reviews, game news, stories, and opinion. The second issue is out, so check it out. Punchboard Media, where we all bring something to the table. Hey, hit me and Jason up on social media tonight at Twitter at, Fort, at Board Game Gumbo or on Facebook, facebook.com slash Board Game Gumbo, and we'll be looking for your questions on the chat. All right, man, let's get this thing started. We already got some people live in here, uh, Jason. So, Jason Dinger, welcome to the show. Give us the elevator pitch. Who's Jason Dinger and what's Captains of the Gulf? Uh, I am um, an Army vet, uh, Jiu-Jitsu brown belt, husband, father. I've got two adult kids. Uh, we, we've got the empty nest at 44, which is pretty nice. Both kids have moved out. And um, so uh, the long story short of it is after the kids moved out, we found ourselves sitting around, vegging on phones, doing nothing on a Friday night. Started hearing about these board games we didn't know anything about. Got Carcassonne, Dominion, Ticket to Ride, and it just grew from there. Uh, that was about five or well, I guess now about six years ago. And, um, with captains of the Gulf, you know, so board games became a huge part of our lives. We, um, we, we actually cut all of our cable and everything off because we were playing games. So we're, we're never, we're, we're either playing games or we're making stuff to give away to people, you know, or, you know, so, so we don't even watch TV. Um, that being said, um, Two years ago on Valentine's Day, um, 2016, she and I cooked a meal together. We ate dinner, cleaned up the kitchen. We played a few board games, went to bed. I woke up at midnight with, from this vivid dream of us playing a board game, running shrimp boats in the Gulf of Mexico and, uh, jumped out of bed. Start. I was, I was too tired to, to go to the living room and grab a notebook. I did now I sleep with a notebook. I didn't back then. Uh, because of this night, I sleep with a boat notebook. Now I just started texting ideas myself while I could, rem you know, while I was fresh in my head, and um, you know, it just grew from there. I, it was just something. My grandfather ran shrimp boats in the 1950s after World War II, and um, I've worked in the boating industry uh, in the oil field, not on, you know. So I've worked with shrimpers, but I've never actually been a, a, a fisherman, my, fisherman myself. And we, um, you know, so the game, it's 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 definitely a passion project. Uh, it's uh, it was never meant to be published in, in, in that I meant that my goal was never to be published. My goal with none of my games ever be published. It's just to create something, to have something for Don and I to enjoy, and then to explore our Louisiana heritage. Every game I design has something to do with Louisiana, uh, whether I like it or not. It's just what comes out of my soul. It's what I have to do. Hey, Steve O'Rourke checking in. He says, Jason, welcome to the gumbo. Loving the passion in the life story and the call to gaming. Hey, Steven wasn't around back then, but you were actually the first. Now he helps me out with the show every each and every week. You were actually the very first guest on the gumbo way back when. That's a picture of me and you oh, on the wow. first. Yeah, the first talk show version. I had done a couple of solos before that, and uh, might have even done one with uh, Dave and, and Dustin. But this is you. <laughs> this is you showing me the climbers, which, by the way, I now own. I love the climbers. We play it all the time. It's a great beer and pretzels game for a pub or just a. A nice little thinky filler, but um, that was that was us way back when. Back then, you t you were telling us the big story about Captains of the Gulf. BJ from Board Game Gumbo here. I've got Jason Dinger, designer of Captains of the Gulf, and Jason. The game is finally out in the hands of people. It's out in Essen. What happened today? I heard some good news for you today. Yeah, I um, I try to be active on the BGG forums. Um, you know, answering any questions, any things like that. And I I popped on this evening after work and saw someone was asking where the booth was because they wanted to go get a copy. They didn't have, they, they didn't pre-order, but they wanted to get one. And unfortunately for them, someone replied that they had just left the booth and everything was sold out except for pre-orders. Now I, I don't know that Uli, um, I know some companies they'll, they'll like ration so many, they'll only have so many for each day of the con. I don't know that he does that with the size of his print run, considering the fact that he's already got, got so many allocated for, 
his pre-orders he's done for Europe for um, for the Essen pickup pre-orders, Board Game Bliss in Canada, Game Surplus in the BGG store in the U.S. I don't know that he had that many left. Um, the way he was talking to me a couple weeks ago, it, it had already, with pre-orders, sold pretty well. Like, I don't think he had a whole lot left over going into Essen. So, um, so he... I'm trying not to bug him. I know he's busy with Essen, so I'm, I'm kind of leaving him alone. Um, well, but... I've got a shot up right there. If you see, that's Uli. And you, when you say Uli, you're talking about Uli. Oh, Uli oh, Blinman. Last name. Blinman, that's right. Yeah. Uh, who's the owner of Spielworks over there in Germany. Uh, kind of a boutique publisher. Does a thousand print run. And then sometimes will license the game to other publishers. But that's him talking to our friend Steph from BGG on the broadcast. What did that feel like to wake oh, up? And to see Uli out there demonstrating the game, which I don't think you actually have in your hands yet, right? No, I haven't gotten my copies yet. I, I, again, I Uli's been very, very good to me, and and he wouldn't mind me when I say bugging him. He wouldn't mind me asking him, but just out of respect, I I trust him implicitly. Um, so what did that feel like, man? What did that feel like? I, to I see cried. That on screen? I yeah. stood there, I and 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 I weeped like a baby. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, <laughs> I. I'm standing. I'm, well, I'm sitting here now. But that morning, the, the funny thing is, I had done bad math, and so I thought it was going to be an hour later. So I saw. I happen to. I'm, I'm getting my coffee in the morning, and I see the announcement, and I'm like, "Well, let me just go watch the other games, just in case they get off, you know, the uh, you know timing." Well, thankfully, they were behind by five minutes. They were delayed, but Uli was coming up next because of my bad, you know, math with sure. the time. So when he pulled the box out. And, and, and opened it. I'm the house I live in. My grandfather built with his hands, my grandfather, who this game is an homage to, you know, it, so, you know, he passed away years ago and, and, and we bought, we bought the house 10 years ago when my grandmother passed, we bought it from the family. So I'm standing in the house that he built and watching the game being opened for the first time that is, is 100% in honor of him. And, and what a lot of people don't, my grandfather, um, I am him. You know, oh, yeah. anybody that knows me that knew him, especially older people from, from my parents' generation, my grandfather's generation, when they meet me and they find out, wait, you do woodworking and you play bass guitar and you paint and you draw and you design board games, and you do martial arts and you, all these things that they go, that's him. That's, he, he was ADHD in the 40s and didn't know it. And, and he managed it the way I manage it by just being busy creating what was he his was name? Tilden J. Fields. He, he was uh, TJ. He was just known as TJ. He, you would not believe if I gave you his resume. He was a welder. He was a machinist. <laughs> I believe he, it. He did construction and carpentry. He ran the pogey plant. He ran shrimp boats. He, he built boats and then became the foreman of the shipyard, running shipyards where they built boats. He was in, I'm not kidding, the Army, the Navy, and the Coast Guard. What? Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he, 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 he did like a, you know, four to two year stint in each one. We, um, we, it was classified at the time, but we got the documents when he passed away and we got the house and got through everything. He, his shrimp boat was actually used by the Coast Guard to do um, mine sweeping and, and you know, uh, like spying to look for U-boats that were suspected to be in the Gulf. During the Gulf, while, yeah. While, while he was that. going out fishing, it's... it's Dude, when I tell you, I mean, I mean, he, he was a true renaissance man. And when, when people tell me that I remind them, if I could be a tenth of the man he was, that would be a huge accomplishment. He, you know, he, he, my parents divorced when I was young and my dad worked offshore. So he and my grandmother raised me for a good part of my life. I would be here for half the week. Um, so I, I grew up, you know, I grew up with them. But uh, Hey, that's Ryan Courtney yeah. checking in. Thanks, Ryan, for watching. He says, congrats, Jason. I, Thanks, I don't know if you know. I, I know Ryan really well. He's the designer of Pipeline, which is oh. getting ready to go on Kickstarter for uh, Capstone. It's going to be Capstone's first sure. original game. Donna and I got to play a uh, prototype of it two years ago, well, a year and a half ago at HeavyCon. Fell in love with it and started messaging him, basically begging to get the PNP files. And we played it several times at the house. We made a PNP. I love that game. Brilliant game. And Brian and I, or excuse me, Ryan. I would apologize ahead of time. I haven't slept in two days. <laughs> yeah, a <I> bit. <laughs> uh, well, between work and Essen, it's just been it's been crazy we're gonna for get, me. We're going to get so, loopy, Jason, tonight. Yeah, like so Ryan, Ryan and I go back and forth um, every now and then um, just sharing. You know, we, we don't necessarily talk design so much. Um, 
it's it's funny we someone else joked that we're polar opposites we don't think we're polar opposites we just we do approach things from different aspects but he respects steam as much as i respect mechanics um we just only <laughs> start with with one of the you know with with the other but uh we'll talk a lot about the industry and just you know um how so th- you know you were talking about work. your grandfather though i'm curious You've put a lot of homages to to the culture, to your local town, your favorite restaurants, to the people. Were you able to give an homage to your grandfather, TJ? I I didn't because the game itself is about his life. True, the um, whole game yeah. is an homage, Dan. Right. The the I, I did little things for other people who are important to the game, but. Can you share yeah. those, or do you want people? Oh to no, no, I, they they know. Um, there's there's four player colors: red, yellow, blue, and green. And each player board has a picture of a boat, a, a wooden hull shrimp boat, like my grandfather used to run. Sure. I always play blue. Uli plays blue, so the blue player board that boat is named the Miss Donna. Of course. So so my wife will forever be you know immortalized as as the Miss Donna on that boat. And then the other three colors yellow is miss summer the green is miss brenda and the red is miss jen those are three friends of ours they and their husbands were the main play testers for a, a year plus when the game before you know when the game was being built up nice um at, for all of our four player play tests and those are the favorite colors of either them or their husband and so those boats were named after them uh you know in their honor so so that those are the big ones um there's for those who are not, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, there, there's also a surprise in the box that I don't know if I want to ruin it. For, if people have gotten the game or seen pictures may already know that, but it's something that um, was actually Uli's idea that I'm really excited about. Oh, if you, if you um, don't want to say it, then don't say it. I don't it know. I don't know. It's not, if you, people who've seen pictures would already know it. As a matter of fact, you can see it in that picture, but you'd have to zoom into a particular part. All right, I'm gonna. I've got it up on the big part that you can't see it on your screen, but for the viewers, it's a it's a big giant screen. What I, are we I looking for? I actually can see it. I actually can see it. Oh, okay. It's one of the wooden pieces. Okay, so look for you a may, little you Easter may not be able egg. To tell from there, yeah. <laughs> a little Easter egg in the wooden pieces. So, Jason, you and I have played on this board together. Well, not this board. On the original prototype board, which what was a lot was smaller. It, oh yeah. What was it like to see this? giant do you remember at the start of the broadcast steph actually had to say oh we're gonna have to kind of zo-. or maybe they it was had to move the camera yes yeah. so, somebody said we got to move the camera and zoom out because we can't get the board on the screen right. um, what, what was that well, like I knew seeing it was that coming. i knew it was coming because um when uli and i uli and i got to meet in person we skyped quite a few times we got to meet in person at heavy con in denver this past may and uh you know while we we're there we talked about a lot of things um one of which was, um, he's, you know, the pieces that were in my prototype were what either I could afford to make at home or with all the seafood chits, my hands were cramping. So I went to the game crafter and I uploaded my art files, but to get that number of chits, you know, for a print and play, I, um, or a print on demand, I should say it, it was kind of expensive. So I went with the smallest chits I could get, which were these little half inch seafood chits and, and it worked and it was functional, but Uli said, look, we've, it's going to cost, when you're doing a big print run, um, a thousand is big compared to my print run, which was one at the Game Crafter. Sure. He said, you know, we've, we've got more than enough space on these punch boards. Let's make the chits bigger and that'll allow us to make the board bigger because I'm paying for the same price for the size of board you have to go up to a 22 by 33, which is what oh, that is. I love 22 that. 22 by 33. Mine was 18 by 27. So, so the- um, so for the viewers who are not familiar with Captains of Golf, I'm going to go through some pictures. And, and if you don't mind, give us a quick synopsis of how the game is played. Uh, you know, give us the, the, give us the main mechanisms and how the game is played. Okay, well, the heart of the game is your hand of six cards. But your actions are driven by uh, an action track. Some people refer to it as a rondelle. Uli and I have talked and because people expect a certain Matt Gertz type feel when they hear rondelle and, and the way our rondelle or our action track works a little more thematic in other words, with a Gertz game, I can keep going to this one spot a lot of times and keep just doing that action in captains of the Gulf. You can't, if you have no fuel, you have to get fuel before you go sail out. You know, that you have to do things in a certain order though, as the game progresses and you get in, you know, second, third round, uh, maybe sometimes even the first round, depending on what you've done, 
you can skip spaces by taking bonus actions and things like that, special abilities that you've gotten. Um, so you see the, the captain's wheel there. Uh, you move a meeple around that. Um, moving one or two spaces is free. Anything beyond that costs a dollar. Money is points. Um, the timing of the game is driven by as each player moves around. Uh, if you see in the top left corner of the, uh, the wheel, there's a little buoy. When you cross over that, it triggers the, uh, the round timer to move. And the round timer is equal to the number of players Got in it. the game. Uh, and what you're doing, you're, you're fueling up, sailing out to fish, sailing back to port, going to the market to sell, and then going to the shipyard to add cards to your boat. And you, uh, you add cards. The, the three uses of cards for added to the boat are to tuck them at the top, which is a license. License dictate the amount of that type of seafood you can fish and store at any given time. You're adding crew members and boat upgrades to the left and right, respectively. And those give you special abilities. Uh, they, they break rules, improve certain, uh, certain abilities. Uh, it's all very thematic in that the deckhands allow you to... You Normally, when you fish, you know, the fourth thing a card is used for is in the center of the card is one or more types of seafood, one or two quantity. You discard when you sail, you sail out. If there's that type of seafood, you have the licenses and storage. You pick it up. Um, and with the deck, normally you can only play one. A deckhand lets you play an extra card for the two types of seafood that deckhand specializes in. So there's three deckhands, and each specializes in two different types. Uh, the first mate's uh, thematic in that uh, two things. One, they give you a discount of moving around that action track. In real life, when the captain's asleep, the boat doesn't move. Uh, with, with a qualified first mate, you can still get things done. So ah. it makes it a little cheaper to get those extra <laughs> actions. Um, but also, a good first mate knows good fishing grounds. So he's going to bring in a prime catch. You know the way, say, for instance, shrimp are sold. They're sold by the size. Uh, and they're, they're priced by the size. So thematically there, if you've got a shrimp first mate, when you go to the market with shrimp, you're going to move up extra on the um, – it's not on the screen now, but on the, the big picture of the final product of the board – you'll see there's three tracks at the very top. The top right, there's three tracks. Those represent your, your, um, your influence or your reputation, uh, is what I was looking for, your reputation in the three ports, Morgan City, Tampa, and Corpus Christi. And every time you sell seafood, depending on the amount that you sell and the mixture, you'll move up a different number of spaces. Um, getting to stars on those tracks are worth different amounts of, of money revenue at the end that revenue thematically represents because your reputation is higher when you're in that port, you're, you know, you're going to get a discount if you stay at the hotel or you do this or you do that, or you're going to, you know, you're going to get paid a little extra. So thematically it represents that, you know, the, the value that you bring to that, that port. Uh, but with a first mate, you move up an extra and on those tracks, there's a race in two aspects. Uh, one is that there are two rewards on specific spaces on each track. That's a first come first serve, whoever gets those. Uh, secondly is the very last space on the track. Only one player can get there. So by the end of the game, if I'm there and you've done enough to get there, you're going to be stopped one shy and getting there is an ex it's a bonus extra three bucks uh, because I've become the most popular fisherman to serve that port. So first mates do that. And then engineers, there's three engineers. They have three different things they do relative to what an engineer would actually do on the boat, whether it's saving you money or giving you a bonus. Um, and then the boat upgrades, they are everything from uh, improved propellers and engines that allow you to sail at a discount or idle at a discount, improving your storage, um, improve, you know, getting a galley that lets you cook the seafood, which makes it more valuable, um, uh, a fuel line that lets you buy fuel even if you're offshore, the thematic sense there is you're hooking up to a platform to buy fuel. Um, told you my brain is fried right now. <laughs> oh yeah, so, that's a, uh, that's an awesome overview, man. I'll tell you the the in in the lead up to Essenspiel, what I was really amazed about was the fact that there were so many people just uh, who already seemed to know about this game and and, and were excited about already getting to it. I, I found uh, Tony Boydell. You, you're familiar, familiar with I'm, Tony. You, you I'm play a, a lot of this game. I'm a fan of Tony, yes. Look, this is what he said. He had it, he had it listed on his list of most anticipated uh, games. 
Uh, fishy spielworks goodness i like fish with the big thumbs up that must have been a cool thing you know you're friends with tony and and to be able to see this happen i i wouldn't i'm a i wouldn't say i'm friends i wish i was friends with tony i'm a, I'm a big fan of his games i don't i don't know tony i've never actually met him okay he got to see the game and uli at uh Liericon in portugal earlier this year um so that that's been the thing that's been amazing for me is people who have seen the game and played it who are excited for it. It's, it's one thing um, just for people. I, I know people who are, you know, uh, fishermen who say, I, I want to get the, people whose grandparents, you know, or parents or someone in their family does it. People who are just Spielworks fans. You know, it's one thing for them not knowing anything else, being excited about it. But for the number of people who have played it and then gone on social media and said, and, and this blows me away to say this, you know me better than anybody know how I am about compliments. I don't, I'm getting better at dealing with them, but they make me feel <laughs> awkward. Um, but, uh, you know, to say that this is my most anticipated game of the year or of the festival, that, I mean, man, that hits me in the heart. Uh, one one uh, is a guy named Chris Snyder. He, uh, he played it in Denver, and he actually lost. He, he did something in the second or third round where – uh, I don't want to give away too much strategy. I'd like people just to explore that themselves. To discover it. But yeah. he, he made a really bad and, – and my games are games where there is no catch-up mechanism. I feel that if I've designed it right, it doesn't need a catch-up mechanism because the only way you're losing that bad is because you messed up. And if you messed up, you deserve to lose. Play I, better, right? My, right. My, my games punish you if you plan – they reward you. Now, I will say this. I have purposely put myself behind the eight ball and, and when I'm playing with new people – and just, just really tanked myself by the third round to see if I can at least come back and get a, a respectable okay. second. And I've been able to do it. But you've got to really play well from then on. Um, so anyway, what happened was um, he made a really bad move. Basically wasted an entire round. And I've just, I just my heart sank, and I went, this guy's going to hate the game, and he's going to tell everybody the game is horrible because, you know, because this happened. And he, he won't realize that, he just made a bad move. Well, the next morning, so I, I, I went to bed that night, kind of down, but I was like, you know, that's going to happen. People, my, people hate my favorite games that are, that are in the top 10 in BGG. People hate them. So it's like, it's going to happen. I wake up the next morning, getting coffee. I go on Twitter and this, this guy, Christopher, he is raving about this is his most anticipated game of the year. He loved the fact that he realized after the fact where he messed up and that it beat him down. And, and he loved it. And, and he, since then, he has, he has made posts all over Facebook and Twitter about how he loves this game. I'm not going to name it. This other game, I'm not going to games that I enjoy um, that are doing really good, that are on the hotness. But he said Captains is his most anticipated game of the year. And then yesterday he told me, he corrected me when I repeated that. He goes, no, no, no. This is my most anticipated thing of anything that I'm going <laughs> to experience in 2018. So I'm like, oh, man, that's, 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 that's really cool. something. Um, I saw one on uh... – uh, I saw one on Twitter, maybe, where a guy actually, you know, you know what? It came from you. Uh, a guy from um, uh, Estonia, I think it was. Yeah, from Latvia. From Latvia, that's right. Bought the game, started punching, and posted. You don't even know who this guy is. He's he's 5,000 miles away, and he's out there taking your product home and punching it. What, what did not, that feel not like, just, man? Not just punching it. I, I had a real, I've told you. Without getting into it, I had three servers crash over two networks last Thursday and spent all weekend working on it and then was dealing with residual stuff this week. So I haven't slept well in a week. And then with all everything going on with Essen, I haven't slept well in the last two days. So I had a blah day at work today fixing some stuff. And so I come home, I sign on Twitter, and the first thing I see is, is this tweet about punching. And not only that, but the one statement said that was their most, uh, most anticipated game of of spiel 2018 and i had i just sat back in my chair and went wow i don't care how bad work was today that was pretty cool you tim know? kaiser checking in he says get used to the compliments jason you are the real deal hey tim that's that's very nice man you, you're making jason blush <laughs> yeah tim's tim's a pretty amazing tim is the person who taught me pipeline oh okay at, at, uh last year in denver um, ryan's game and yeah and asked me to play test my newest game crescent city cargo and not only did Tim make the PNP and play test it, but sent me a video, a, like a five minute video of, of he and the other people and talking about everything from the play. It was amazing. It was, 
it, t- Tim is a board game designer's best friend. He, you, you know, like, I don't know what con I'm going to see him at next, but I'm buying him dinner as many <laughs> times as he'll let me. Thanks. Hey, Jason, I threw up a picture of, of us actually playing, you and I playing way and back when. This, this is a couple of years ago. Yeah, that's Bradley playing right there, uh, kicking our butts. Uh, if you remember right, he, he, he scored over 200 points or somewhere around that. And you right, were like, back, back when it was wow. points, before it was money. Sure. I was like, sure. okay, I'm going to, I'm going to, and that happens in play testing. You, you make changes on the fly. I right. changed the score track right there and <laughs> add a spot where if you, if you lapped it again, can I pick never on gotten you? Over, over like 120. Can I pick on you just for a second? Look, there's oh, Tim ahead. saying free food, free food. Yes, Tim. <laughs> Tim. Hey, Tim, meet us at BGG and uh, Jason and I will go we'll take you to dinner. That'd be fun. For sure. Hey, Jason. So you, you, you came to me. We had seen it before. He had played it at uh, End Books too. Maybe, maybe a, yes. just like a couple through the actions. And then this is a couple months later, and you're like, "Man, I really think the diamond is shined. It's ready to go." We brought it to the office. Bradley scored 200 points. You're like, "Wow, I still got some more play testings to do." But wait, that's a good thing, right? I mean, oh, that's were, absolutely. My yeah. motto is fail faster. I love. I, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's great whenever, like with with um, the play test that uh, Tim and his group did. Um, the only negative feedback was that I forgot to give him the, the player aids. I forgot to get oh. the files made, forgot to upload them. And then there were some things um, in the uh, graphic design that could be cleaned up. But what I wanted as far as the gameplay, you know, all that. With, now, granted, Don and I play test a lot. Um, with Crescent City Cargo, now we're only play testing about once a week because we play test a lot early on. And um, I, 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 I'm hesitant to say my games are heavy. But uh, but there's a little brain burn when I'm yeah. done with Crescent City trying to really get things. It, it's I feel it's definitely heavier than Captains. Uh, very very different game. Um, the tenets of my design are there in in all of my designs, and that is it's it's driven by theme. Um, whether it plays, you know, whether you're playing two, three, or four, the um, the game feel is the same. The uh, there on your when it's not your turn, there's almost no downtime. Turns are very quick. Uh, you know, so it's so so BJ all those Morgan. things are still there. Yeah, BJ from Morgan Game Gumbo. I've got my guest Jason Dinger here on Gumbo Live. Jason, you got this new one coming out. It's been it's been percolating, and then you started working on it, and now you got people out there with the uh, play test. Tell us about. Just give us the quick elevator pitch. What is um, is uh, Crescent City Cargo? By the way, I love the name. You know yeah. that. Um, I I say this um, without trying to be a bright. I guess humbly. I guess. I think I come. I, th- I think I'm good at coming up with game names, like you right are. when <laughs> right when I do it, they just come to me. And so, you uh, are, you and Steve O'Rourke, the name father, man. You guys are yeah. both really good at names. So what? Uh, Crescent City Cargo was inspired by a picture from the 1920s of a grain elevator loading grain at the Port of New Orleans on a steamship, and it was a black and white photo. And I saw it; it's just iconic, and it's just just really hit me. And um, I so this is an homage wanted... to the Steve Adoring operations, the longshoremen, the the crane operators, the riggers, those guys that that are out on Chapatula uh, Street and, every day, and, and knocking the, at the uh, ports on Julia Street. And more than that, just to the the industry of logistics, um, yeah. both in the army and now as a civilian, I've I've spent most of my adult life working in logistics, and um, so. What, uh, what, what it's about then is it's about the Port of New Orleans um, and you are running competing logistics companies. And there's five goods in the company, in, in, the, in the game. And just like how Captains of the Gulf actually, I never, like I said, when I designed it, it was from a dream. But I can look back and go, oh, the idea of multi-use cards I got from Lagrania, the idea of pick up and deliver I got from Steam. You know, so, so the diff- there's different things in captains of the golf that came from games that you wouldn't imagine uh well with crescent city cargo it plays nothing like these games but it has um some inspiration in vital de Soto's lisboa in ruga dorn's il vecchio in tony boydell's snowdonia um and so what it is the uh there is a um a rondelle even though some people may say it's not a rondelle there's a uh, a rondelle of six warehouse spaces and there's a, a warehouse pond there. And then there's a rondelle of six locations at the port with uh, two trains and four cargo ships. And then between them, there are three shipping containers. And what you do on um, this, actually, I came up with it. And then I realized that subconsciously it was 
most likely inspired by Lisbo is Church Rondell, where there it's this much of the game, but in Crescent City Cargo, it's the heart of the game, and it makes it very tactical. You move one or two spaces, and then in um, Les- Lisboa, you get the, uh, the church tile that's either before or after where you end up. When Crescent City Cargo, you're moving one or two spaces, and then you're picking up goods before or after the warehouse space where you end up, or delivering goods before or after the port location where you end up. Um, so that was one thing. And then uh, with Ovicio, it's a game where you basically, there's no rounds. You take turns until you have to recover and then you recover uh basically kind of like a reset and um you the end game is triggered by a certain you know by certain things that could happen so uh that's how uh crescent city cargo works uh though again it works nothing like ovecchio you're you know there are no set rounds you're taking turns uh the the game is actually driven by uh, primarily by the economy of your workforce okay every player has 16 workers that they can hire and put to work during the game. And uh, you, you start with one on your first truck and then three ready to go. And then you have four uh, in your first area on the workforce at the bottom of your player board, uh, then six, and then two at the end. And they progressively get more expensive to hire when you get into the different uh, sections that they're in. And once any, the, the main in game triggers once somebody has hired one, of the, one or both of the people in their last space. You, uh, when that happens, you finish the current round and then everybody gets three actions that they take. So first player, you come back on first player, take three actions back to back Then second player, you know, on down and then you do final scoring. Um, so it has that idea of just taking turns back to back from Ovechio, but it plays nothing like Ovechio. Um, and then from Snowdonia, uh, with Snowdonia, you are delivering, you know, when you're, when you're, you're building track, it doesn't have that. But then you, there are spaces that you build in the stations, and they require you. You put a cube there to show that you've done it, and you okay. So I have to give up one iron or one steel bar, or or you know, um, two stone or whatever, and then those are worth you know worth points at the end of the game. Well, well here you have cargo ships, four cargo ships, and it'll say it wants two coffee. And when you deliver that, you get that money now. Then there are always two trains on display, and the trains want one of two different types of goods. And that's actually a miniature area majority battle. As, so as you load, you know, got workers there, uh, depending on the number of players, depending on the number of spaces that are available, and once it's full based on player count, then uh, it triggers, you know, a scoring wherein there are goal cards that are worth anywhere from, you know, one to five points, depending on how well you complete them. Um, and you, uh, in the order of who won the area majority on the train, you get to go pick those, you know, pick, yeah. pick one of those. Um, and, uh, you know, then there's shipping containers, which is speculation, uh, for, you know, future contracts that might be, those just want, you know, any two food delivered to them or any two building material. Those don't score anything during the game, but at the end of the game, it's a, an escalating score based on how many you have out there. So they could be worth on anywhere from one to 13, not, not individually, but overall, all of them out there could be worth 13 points total, uh, up to 31 points if, if everyone else sits back and lets you do that by yourself. Um, how, how many players does it play, and how long does it take to play Crescent City Two to Cargo? four. Two to four, and all of my games play in about an hour to an hour and 20 minutes. Okay. Um, so, And then you also have, um, you have building upgrades that you're building, and each one of those require a worker. Um, those give you, you know, th- those are rule breakers. And special abilities. Um, everybody starts with one of those at the beginning. You draft a gold card, an, an office upgrade, and one starting uh, resource. Um, and there, there's wood, iron, meat, coffee, and grain in the game. And everything but grain is used for something else to to improve your state in the game. Okay. So, and I want to do that. Where what you score with is also what drives, um, you know, how you improve your abilities in the game. So you got to make the decision whether to score with it or to invest in an engine for later right, on, yeah. right? Because the way the scoring works, like on the on the on the cargo ships, um, whereas where a lot of the money is, is that the the earlier you, if the one that wants you know two grain will pay four bucks, but the one that wants four grain it only pays six. So you're getting two dollars per grain for the one that that wants two. The one that wants four grain, it you know it's only paying a buck and a half. 
And the reason for that is you can only deliver two things at the start of the game. You have to improve on the gantry track, right. which a gantry is the, the you know, the, uh, the A-frame that would uh, hold the, the crane to load things on and off the ships. Okay. Uh, Got to improve that if you right. want to load more and more things on the ship. Correct. And the game is built so that you're not going to just be able to race up that track before the two and three spots mm -hmm. are fil filled on the boats. Um, the, the, thematically, that represents that mm -hmm. the market's now flooded with grain. So grain is, they still want that four grain, but it's not going to pay as much per, you know, per each grain that you're, you're discarding to do it. Yeah, that um, makes sense. Then there's the, the forklift track. So the gantry track dictates how many goods you can deliver, how many cubes, you know, so the actual quantity. The forklift track dictates how many types of goods you can pick up at the warehouse. So you can pick up as much as you have the morale, because like I said, morale is the economy of the game as far as your sure. actions, as far as the morale and then the, the space on your trucks that you have. Uh, the forklift determines the number of types you can pick up. You advance on that with iron. And I did do my research. The first, uh, you know, motorized forklift truck was uh, in 1905. Mm -hmm. So that is thematic for the time, for the time frame. And then um, this is my favorite part of the game, the HR track. Because uh, you take actions until <laughs> our track, right? You, you take actions. Uh, Seventy-five percent of the actions in the game require you to spend morale for your workers as they're loading and unloading goods. So you start at the beginning of the HR track at, at three. So when you when you rest, you're going to go up to three on the on your morale on your player board. Well, you can advance on that so that now I'm moving up to four, five, six, seven, eight morale when I rest. So I don't have to rest as often. I can keep doing things or doing more powerful things. Um, and you move up. This is my favorite part of the game. You move up on the HR track to improve your morale by spending coffee. <laughs> well, you of spend course. Coffee. And, <laughs> and, and it's very thematic because in, um, you know, coffee is, is really big to the port of New Orleans. Absolutely. You know? So, but yeah, there, there's, there's more to the game, but I could talk all night about it. I, sure. I'm, I love Cabs of the Golf. I'm, I'm itching to play it because once I started seeing Harold's art about five months ago, I told myself, put away the prototype. It's retired. Work on something else. So I thought that was going to be easy. It's not. I really, really want to play Captains of the Golf. I miss it. Um, so I have to wait until I get but, my comp copies to be able to play it. But uh, you're I'm so not... excited about the Crest City. And speaking of excitement, I got distracted there for a second. Let me tell you why. Because your main play tester was, was jumping in on the chat, Donna <laughs> Dinger. She, she is your main play tester, your confidant. She's my inspiration, my main yeah. play tester. I. She's as much a co-designer. She doesn't actively design so much, but we'll talk. I mean, we're, I'm not, this is no, um, you know, this is not, it's fluff. not just words. Yeah. yeah. She is my best friend. I am her yeah. best friend. We, um, we joke that we spend our entire life trying to find best friends and, and we've been together since we were 12. I'm 44. So we right. joke that we, we, we tried to find, and, and all along we were, her dad was a commercial fisherman and hunter. So our dates when I was 12 was us sitting on the porch about a foot apart splitting a little 25 cent bag of uh, uh, barbecue free or chili, chili cheese Fritos. Uh, right. Cause that's what I could afford cutting grass when I was 12. And her dad would pull the curtain back and he'd knock on the window and he'd look at me and he'd look at his gun rack and I was <laughs> further away from her. So we joked that while we said we were dating, we were really best friends, All right. you know, for, for, cause we didn't go on our first actual date, go on the movies or whatever to, to be able to hold hands until I was 16. You know, we were 16. So, right. um, so that said, you know, we, we go to lunch. We, we treasure the fact she used to be a school teacher where we couldn't go to lunch together. Now she works across the street from me. So we go to lunch together. We have breakfast together and we'll talk about the play test from the night before. And she'll off, like I said, she's not as active in the notebook, but she'll say, Hey, what about this? And, and like I said, I, I credit her so much. My designs would not be what they, what they are without her, Wh whatever they are, they would not be that without her. Absolutely. Um, she's, she's my favorite opponent. We uh, people at cons don't know how to take it because she and I don't have filters and the things we call each other. We laugh about it, but we also we're brown belts in jujitsu. So we beat the crap out of each other a couple nights a week too, and smile and laugh and get in the car and come home and have dinner, you know? So it's, um, we're, we're not competitive people, but we are with each other in a fun way. Sure. You know, we, we, we don't play co-op games. We don't like co-op games. We love to go head to head and trash talk. You know, I mean, that's, that's just who we are. We, we love, we don't do that so much to other people, but we do with each other. BJ from Morgan Game Gomo. I've got my guest here, Jason Dinger. We've been talking about his designs, but I also want to hear about a spicy game that you, that you and I have been talking a lot offline. 
and to tell me a little bit about it. Uh, Heaven and La- Heaven and Ale. That's a game that you really you've really enjoyed this past year, isn't that right? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm a confessed Keesling fan. I love Keesling's games. The, his, his days done with Kramer and, and otherwise. I think um, I probably have. He's probably the designer that I have the second most games of. I mean, even really? it's hard to get games. Cavum, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, I've, so, I've got so many of his games. Um, we so just what, got Riverboat. What do you like about Heaven and Ale? What What attracts you to that game? Um, it's a perfect school night game. Uh, it's It's not the typical game. Don Don and I, you know, I mean, we um, we do tend to lean more towards the uh, you know ground floor arc right. Uh, sure. Feudum. We've played Feudum almost ten times in a month. You know, um, but a good sixty minute game for two players. That's it, that's re- it. Really we, looks for a play, Euro game. It looks thematic. Oh no! It's it's. Um, I don't know how thematic it is. It's pretty abstract, to be honest. Oh, is it? It looks. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, there's there's there is some thematic flair, but but Keesling's games do tend to be abstract. They're not all Azul. But they do tend to be fairly abstract. But I, but I like. Man, that. I love that artwork, though. Look at that. Oh thing, yeah, and man. I really, I really do love the artwork. Who did but, the artwork? Do you know? Uh, I want to say that's not Lowhausen. I don't. No, um, it's Fury. Uh, Fury, GmbH. So uh, apparently they they sent it to uh, like a company because GmbH um, is, the, is a company. Right. No, it's it might be listed elsewhere. So you were saying what att- what attracts you to the game though? Oh, yeah, you know, they don't listen. Okay. Um, well, what attracts me to the game is that Don and I really love, for as much as we love heavy, uh, heavy games, we love what we call school night games. And those sure. are Euros that for we play pretty fast. So we actually play Heaven and Hell two-player in like 45 minutes or so, maybe even less than that. So you like so, those one-hour wonders that you can just knock out an hour before or after dinner, right? It's, it's, got, it's got meat on the bones. It's, there's no brain burn. We can be done and go to bed at a decent time. You know, Riverboat's the same. I, I'm not ready to say which one I like more. But what I also, after the second or third play of Heaven and Ale, I thought I was done with it. And I was going to give it away. And I said, you know, let's, let's play it one more time before I give it away. I want to I just get one more play with it. And we played it, and I saw things I didn't see before in it. I thought I figured it out. And we, we played it. And man, it just, it, it hit me. It was like, there's, there's more to this. I haven't begun to explore for the, for the way it's, it's a, on the lighter medium scale, but there's, there's way more than I've explored. I think at this point we've played it five or six times oh, and great. we're going to play it again soon. What I'm, what I actually want to do, we're going to take a week and just play Keesling's games, <laughs> just play the Keesling week, Cavalum, Azul, Cole Baron, the great card game, Heaven and Ale, Riverboat, four more. I'm, I can't remember because I haven't slept in a week. But yeah, we we really love Keesling's games. Well, I'm hoping to get uh, I'm hoping to get my first play with uh, with uh, Zach and Bradley this weekend. Heaven and Ale, and and hopefully Dave too. Any quick and tips for me? Any strategy tips for me that I can jump ahead on? I I don't want to ruin it for you. Come on, I love being ruined. I love I read them anyway. To, you've got to pay attention to your money. Okay, Every, money's tight in this game. It's very tight. Yes. Um, and while it's not good to throw them away, uh, you know, you know, just, um, willy nilly to use the scientific term. Um, <laughs> it's the, the, uh, Oh, what do you call them? The, 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 the pairing cards. When you, when you, when you complete a scoring pair, you, you can, um, you know, the matching card, you'll get the bonus for it. It'll, it'll sure. go there. You get the most, well, you can also at any time discard those to get a few bucks and don't be afraid to do that at times because, because those few, bucks you'll lose that ability that maybe you didn't need, or you can afford to get away with. Um, but the other thing is to not ignore moving everything up. I raced up on certain things and thought I could do the, uh, there's a really cool scoring mechanism where your score is the lowest of those five resources um, oh, the old Canizia thing, right? Right. Well, well but it, it's a new take on that. Okay. Um, in How does that, it work um, differently? It's based on where your brewmaster is, is the multiplier for that. Ah. So there's a multiplier. So you're also, you're not just moving the five of them up, you're moving him up to get that multiplier. And you, you can trade out, you know. So it's, it's, it's really neat. Um, 
but yeah, don't be afraid because you might you might say I'm going to lose this bonus to get those few bucks, but those few bucks let me buy this thing that sends off this chain of scoring that I can do. Um, but also, one of your favorite games that you got me into that I love that's another you know that that midweight perfect school night game is Porta Negra. That's another game by Keesling, and one one that he did with Keesling uh, with Kramer. Yeah, BJ from Board Game Gumbo. I've got uh, my guest. Jason Dinger here, and we're, and I was actually bringing up a picture of it for you because I wanted to talk about. It. I have it up here for you. I love Porta Nigra, or Porta Negra, as you said uh, from I'm, Strong. I'm, maybe Games. I'm saying it wrong. Yeah, I, I always say Porta Nigra. I'm not sure how it is pronounced. I, I haven't been. It's one of the places I want to visit in Europe. But tell us, tell us, Jason, what? I mean, you you really went nuts for it. You actually bought a bunch of copies and were giving them out for free to people online. What what attracted uh, you to Porta Nigra so much? It. Because I believe in it, if it's that good of a game, and it deserves to be on more people's tables. Sure. Um, what what I do, I'm I'm by no means rich. I uh, uh, we we replaced our roof this year. I'm I am the complete opposite of that. That's true. Um, but what we do is we put aside um, having a budget too tight. Having a budget too tight can you know will drive you to splurge and 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 be worse off. So we 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 budget a little bit of money uh, every month to buy a game. There's not always a game we want to buy. And so, you know, what I'll do is we'll take that money and we'll just we'll we'll find a game we like, hopefully one that's on sale so we can get several copies, if not sure. with just one or two. And we uh, we buy it and then I just do random giveaways um, it, without getting into it. There's there's some things in my in my life uh, when I was younger that um, I've fought with, uh, you know, depression and issues like that, um, PTSD from issues in the military. And so what I've found the best therapy that I've ever found is making other people happy. So kindness. I, I, Active if kindness I, for people, if I make other people happy, it makes me happy. And that, you know, that, that, that gives me, you know, it help, help, helps me fight the, the negativity in my own brain. So we've, said, we've got, uh, we've got Michael Kiesling night here tonight. Cause Porta Nigra is a Kramer and Kiesling game, well, right? Yeah. That, that's what I was saying. That's why I was, I was mentioning, you know, he, that, you know, that's another, that was one of the few I hadn't gotten yet. But, well, I hadn't gotten at the time. I, I finally got it a few months ago and fell in love with it. And the reason I didn't pick it up all those, all that, those years was because of all the little plastic uh, bricks. Yeah. Because as a woodworker, I hate isn't a strong, I loathe plastic components in games. <laughs> and, I know and you do. <laughs> I, I have five Plano boxes behind me on this bookshelf that are full of components that I use for my own prototypes, but it's sure. way more than I use my prototypes. I really use them. So when I get games that have plastic bits, I can go, I'm throwing that spaceship away and we're going to use a pawn. And, and these little, that. man, these little um, plastic towers, the bricks that we use to make the towers on, on the different spots, I could just see that just drove you crazy. <laughs> and I play it, but I am going to, I'm going to take a weekend when I don't have anything else going on. I'm going to make You're my not. Own. Yes, I am. <laughs> Oh yeah, God, it's only a few hundred. So if I set up a good system with some jigs, you know, uh, you know, it, it won't wow. be too bad. Yeah. So this is art uh, from one of your favorite artists, Michael Menzel, and uh, includes all. It says ninety plastic bricks. So that's 90, that's, a that's good, okay. That's, that's a good bad. weekend for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like I said, I'll, I'll make some jigs. I'll come up with a system and make some jigs. So it'll be a lot of repeated cuts where it's held in a jig. So you know, you know why I like Port Niagara. This uh, this is why I like Porta Nigra. I think that uh, that this design duo made games that really make you think. Uh, I like the fact that there are multiple uh, paths to victory. I, I have seen people win with every kind of different strategy on this game. You know, focusing on one section to try to build it up, spreading out amongst all the different sections. Where uh, money is tight in this game, as you as you well yes. know, money is really tight in this game. Focusing on money as as the way to just drop and jump wherever you want to go i've seen so many different ways to win obviously the cards are pretty important and any good euro has at least some kind of uh you know in-game bonus that you can look at but let me tell you uh i, I think porta porta nigra is is one that needs to get it it just it needs to get more love it just didn't seem to to have that cachet that a lot of the other uh Kiesling and kramer games do or Kramer. i, games I think do. when it, i think when it came out um, there was just, it was one of those years when there was a lot of games coming out at that time. And I think it just kind of got lost in the shuffle. Hey, there's Chris Strain checking in. It's a special Thursday show, double gumbo. It's true. Jason, you had, uh, you had, uh, you couldn't make it on Tuesday. So we, we shifted over to Thursday, which is always uh, happy to yeah, uh, our, our talk. Yeah. Our professor, our professor came down from Mississippi. So we had a jujitsu seminar. 
Uh, we have somebody checking in. Ty Mark Recorder says, hey, Uncle Jason, what's up? That's, that's my nephew, Ty. He's, he's gotten into games um, recently. They play Magic and things like that. So we're, we're, he lives around here. So we're going to uh, – years ago, we hooked up uh, uh, once or twice to hang out. But his, at the time, his work schedule was really, really crazy. Um, and, and my work schedule was, with teaching schedule was really busy. So uh, we were talking the other day. We're, now that life is kind of settling down a little bit for the both of us. Um, it, matter of fact, it was at his wedding. Uh, that, that we got to sit down and, and, and talk a bit. We're going we're gonna to get together and uh, play some magic and, uh, you know, play some board games and things like that. PJ from Board Game Gumbo, I've got my guest, Jason Dinger, the designer, Captains of the Gulf, man. It's, it's awesome to see uh, what's been happening with Captains of the Gulf out there at Eschen Spiel. Uh, it's, it's, it's been pretty distracting at work with all the stuff that go, going on, but I've been watching this. But it's that time of the show. This is a board game show. And if we're going to do a board game show, we've got to play games, Jason. You know that. So we've got, we've got a game for you tonight. When, when my brain is fried, we'll see how bad Absolutely. I do with this. You're good at names, though, so we're going to see how that is. Lo- okay. We'll see how good Loopy uh, Jason is. So, Chris, stick around because Chris Strain is very good at this game, by the way. Stephen uh, Bon, uh, Stephen Bon, of course. <laughs> Steve O'Rourke, the name father, has another amazing jambalaya game for you. Now, we made it a little bit easier for you. The jambalaya game, I know you came in last a uh, couple of weeks ago when we were doing music. Mm-hmm. And, and you were a Beatles fan, so that was a tough one for you. But tonight, we've taken uh, board games, and we've mashed them up with things having to do with mostly Louisiana, but especially okay. focused with New Orleans, because a lot of your games have, have things to do with, you know, the Chafalaya Basin and New Orleans right. and all that. So, for, for instance, this is how it works. I'll throw out a clue. Here's, here's a sample one. Take over the world through the power of creamy, delicious soup in this mass market board game made into an ongoing campaign. What game would that be? That game would be... Pandemic Legacy? It would be Bisk Legacy instead oh, of Risk, Risk Legacy. Legacy. Okay. Yeah, wow. Chris. Let's see how good wow. Chris Train can do, Mr. Houston, Texas. Let's see how good he can Chris do. Chris is going to kick my butt. That's what's No, gonna he's not. I'm telling you, he's, he's worried already because it's, uh, it's Louisiana and New Orleans stuff. So uh, one of these days we'll get Chris Train back on and we'll do a yeah, Texas Yeah, but version. in the last seven days I'm running on probably about... <laughs> Maybe 20 hours of sleep. So, Chris, this is your chance. This is your chance. All right, here's the first one. Are you ready, Jason? I'm ready. Let's play the jambalaya game. Okay, good. Let's go. You like Richard Brees games? Uh, I really like Key Flower. I like Key Harvest. Um, Keeper didn't wow me, but it wasn't a bad game. But, uh, but yeah, so. If you like Richard Brees games, you'll love this one about a historic church in Jackson Square. What game are we talking about? Oh, uh, something cathedral. Um, hold on. Oh, Steve, he's already got he's already got right on it, man. No, That's I'm telling you. Um, I should have made coffee. I should have put a pot of coffee on before this started. You community, should, and that would have community that coffee, by the way. Community coffee, of course, and that would have upgraded your brain as part of yeah. this game, right? So, Steve, he's already got the game. He knows it's he's he knows it's uh. I know it's cathedral. I'm just trying to think of the name of that actual. Cathed- and I'm not going to. Uh, Chris I'm not says, touch, "Oh not yeah, touch my I'm miserable." Not Chris. Are you telling me you haven't been to uh, Jackson Square? So, Ty, Michael Carter. I know you get, group plays a lot of Risk. Probably a good game to get into. That's true. But what Richard Brees game are we talking about? You'll love this one about the historic church oh, in Jackson man. Square. What I is know that Cathed- church? I know Cathedral is part of this. I just the last time I was in Jackson Square was. A couple of decades ago. Wait, Steve, uh, you've heard of Community Coffee up there, way up north? Steve lives somewhere north of uh, uh, Manitoba or something like that. I'm trying to remember. Or New York or something like that. One of those one of those states way up north. That, that kind of shocks me. They, they, they know about our Community Coffee up there. All right, so. Oh, man. All right, what's the name of the church over there? I what's was the- dreading this all week. I knew this was going <laughs> to. I didn't even know what, it was, what the combination was going to be. I just knew. The week I was having that I was going to suck at this. Um, <laughs> you know what? You got you got it halfway there. So um, St. Francis Cathedral. You're close. Oh, St. Saint- Saint, uh, Tom. No, wait. You're so close. Oh, Think of a big Anthony? town in Missouri. Big town in Missouri. Oh, St. Louis. No, the St. Louis Cathedral. Cathedral. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Nicely done, Jason. So Steve, oh. was, Steve actually orders community coffee online. Steve is a wise man. He is a wise man. All right. I've so drink let's... plenty of other types of coffee. They don't compare. All right. So th- 
This one, yes, Chris Strain says, that's good enough. You were close enough, Jason. That's good <laughs> enough. All right, so uh, Martin Wallace fan? Oh, I, I told you Captains of the Gulf was in part inspired by Steam. Oh, let's throw one out, a little Martin Wallace game here. If Martin yeah. Wallace designed a train game, but we- it was set around <laughs> the New Orleans hockey team, what would he call it? Are you are you a hockey fan? Do you remember the Orleans see, hockey team? See, I was hoping you say, but I, I at least know the I know the Zephyrs. And, oh, the Zephyrs, the obviously Z's, the Pelicans yeah. and the Saints, but but hockey isn't New York City right next to Manitoba? Isn't that right, wow. Steve? I, he says no. Wow. All right. So, New so what game hockey are we team? Yeah. What? what, what well, it's a train we're... game about the New Orleans hockey team. So, think which I, I don't know. I know. I know jack about hockey. Oh, shoot. I so I'm already – oh, no, I don't know anything about hockey. You know, they're not even around anymore, so you probably don't remember the famous team that was playing down there in the ECHL, the New Orleans what, – what's New Orleans known for, man? Oh, Jazz. Yeah, yeah. What's Jazz was, played with, man? Well, partly with trumpets, but I'm a bass player, so I find that offensive that you're not including <laughs> – the bass um, they do because the bass doesn't help you with this clue and yeah the, oh the trumpeteers but what the, what's it what's a, a great string for the, for the uh, bass man well i mean like the I, I like the low ends i like the e string but um what's a great string type uh you know what it's not oh you're talking about that. oh the oh. wow are you talking about yeah how, the, how it's wound is that what you yeah, mean yeah sure. like flat yeah. wound or round wound um yeah Let's see. Um, so Don is getting close. It's horns. What kind of horns, though? What do we call though? What's a nickname for the horns, man? Brass. Oh, oh brass horns. Oh, <laughs> oh. We just played brass a couple weeks ago too. New both, Orleans both, both of them. brass. If Martin yeah, Wallace designed brass, a train yeah. game, you know what? I'm going to give that one to Donna because you didn't really get it. <laughs> Donna got no, that one. <laughs> had she not said because I'm sitting here saying trumpets, had she not said horns because I'm uh, the way you were fingering. You weren't you weren't doing trombone and trumpet, so. You know what? Let's get a game that that no, you weren't. Oh, were you? Donna says I didn't even get it right. I was wrong. <laughs> you did. Say, you did get him on the. She uh, she subject. triggered she triggered it for me. So we have that. All right. So, you remember that old that old children's games we played, right? We, we played Old Maid. We played well for you and I. We played Bataille or we played uh, or any of those games. Right. Use. Use a children's deduction game with funny faces, but to answer the age-old question, oh, man. can anyone defeat the Saints? What age Who that Clue? Close? Close? Who that? Um, no, it wouldn't be Clue. What's, oh, the one where you have all the little faces. Oh, he's got it. All right, oh. chat room. You're going to have to hurry because Jason's right on it. He's thinking oh, of it. I can't think of the name of the game, though. Look, I can see the wheels turning, though. He's got oh. it. What's the name of the game with all the little faces and you flick the little faces? Yeah. What's, what's he look like? Who did, who that look like? Oh, geez. Oh, come oh. on, Jason. You're so close. Come on, beat the chat room. They're going to get this one. I'm telling you, I can smell it. Oh, who they're, that? They're, right now, the chat room looks like this. Who that? I'm, I'm going to say who that look like, but that's not. You ever saw that cat meme where the cat is doing? Like yeah. That? Yeah. Well, I'm thinking of a meme from, I, I, I don't think I'm allowed to curse on this show, but where they it's a family took, friendly show. Yeah, exactly. So I'm not going to say, but they took um, a picture. Oh, Chris of, Strain's got it. No, Chris. Wait, is that Chris magola has got it? He said, "Guess who that?" Ah, uh, yeah. So what game? Were you, what game? What meme were you thinking about? Well, it's got it's it's got the 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 the, the guess who game, but the the opponent is um, it's a picture of Samuel L. Jackson from Pulp Fiction. Okay, <laughs> and he says, "Does he look like a word?" I'm not going to say on your show. Sure, sure. Because, sure. You, you know, so it's like, and so I've got that picture. So all I'm thinking of is that scene from <laughs> where the guy, where the guy from uh, the guy who does all the sounds. He, he's on, um, uh, he was on Mad TV, but he gets shot in the face while he's laying on the couch. I'm thinking of, the, I'm, I'm thinking about Pulp Fiction. I'm, I haven't slept. <laughs> you so, are yeah. loopy. Next, all right, Chris, next game. Magala gets it, man. Good, good job. How about this one? Vlada Shvatl okay, did a new game, and it's one that we're going to enjoy because of where we're from. Spies okay. that like to dance to some good rub board music, man. Some good rub oh, board wow. music. Spies 
So it's spies. code names something. Spies who like to dance to some good rub board music. Because all it's, it's got to be code names. Because all of a lot of his other games are like Civilization or all his stuff with the uh, the the dungeon lords and dungeon pets and all that. I'm happy to it's, tell you it is code names. But it's got to be something to do with mashup? code names. Yeah. Yeah. So with what's um, that good rub board music, man? Oh, so Zydeco. No boss triangle. There's no triangle in this one, man. You gotta gotta you gotta get a it's not Zydeco. Zydeco. Code name or code name? Zyda. Zyda code names. Zyda code. Oh, he's on a roll, Steve. See, I was saying Zydeco. I had that. I had that. I was. I was thinking how they have code names, duet, code names, pictures. So I was thinking code names Zydeco. That's why I kept saying it like that, but it didn't sound right. So now Vlada's got some big games Dude, too, though. This right? Is, this is Steve comes up with these. Steve does this every week. He is a Steve genius, is amazing. man. Amazing. I've. I've why do you think we call him the name father? Yeah. He's, when, he's when you, normally when you have the show is when I'm teaching and training. So I don't always get to watch. <laughs> so I, wow. Yeah. All right. Here's Steve, one. Steve's amazing. These are good. Vlada makes big games though. You know that. Yes. Not, not just code names. This top 1050 all time game on BGG. It's a sieve builder. It's through, through the ages. It leads to victory, but to develop your technology and build your military, you got to thicken the sauce, man. And you, what do you, you – you get some butter and you get some flour. This, you cook it down. I, just, just because of – I just I want to say through the sages, but I know that's not it. Rue the ages. Yes. Yes. I did it. Oh. Oh. Yes. Isn't that a good one? Rue the that ages. That was good. That was really good. I love that. Man, I, I love that one. If I, if I can ever get to where a, a, a design isn't making me design it, like with Acadians right now, I can't not design it. It's just it's coming out of me. If I ever get to a point where I don't have something that's just pouring out of me, I'm gonna have to take some of these and make games in honor of Steve. Yeah, you and do. Ma- and you make do. little games, you know. I know a game that you're never gonna play, though. Jason, trust me on this. This okay. is a game you're not gonna play. It's just not up your alley. But the fourth edition of this massive space opera, they finally added the one gr- ingredient, the one thing that maybe might entice you to play. It's shellfish. What game are we talking about? Oh, it's Twilight Imperium. <laughs> um, and, <laughs> Jesse Fernandez. Hey, thanks for checking in. He says, "Awesome job, Jason. You're knocking him out." Thanks, Jesse. Uh, I'd love to. Okay. I'd love to put you and me and Steve in a room, and we're going to just start coming up crazy. Well, uh, is Steve crazy going names. to BGG? No, he's going to Pax uh, Unplugged instead. In uh, fact, we're not sure if he exists. He may be just a bot. With a lot of funny names built in there. Well, so. I've, I've been called that before. <laughs> I, uh, I, All right, in, so you're in, stalling. You're stalling. Yeah, it's Twilight Imperium, but I'm trying to figure out which word has changed or if it's a word before or after. Oh, boy. Um, <clears throat> yeah. I do, oh, geez. It's a shellfish. Oh, Chris Magola. He's, he's right on it. Twilight Shimp- shrimpirium. shrimpirium. Chris is good. Chris is good. <laughs> That's two for Chris. He's catching up on you, man. Let's yeah. see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. Um, oh, I've got one for you. I don't know if you've played this game, though. You know, I actually haven't played it, but uh, so the guys in the group have played it a lot. Simon loves selling those big, giant campaign games. You've seen them with all the minis. All the plastic bought. minis. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your favorite stuff. Yeah. And this one has a ton of minis. This Simon game has a ton of minis, but the minis... They all do, but go ahead. ...have Cajun vampires in it. Cajun vampires. Oh, jeez. See, this one I think is going to stump you because... No, this is going to stump me because the only time I recognize the name of a Simon game <laughs> is when they do something controversial and Twitter blows up about it for a day before they forget and get mad about something else. And, um, like, hate. Everybody got mad about hate. I, I sure. just thought it was ridiculous. Chris uh, Strain, I'm calling you out, Chris. This one should see. be right up your alley. Where are you, Chris Strain? So I'm trying to think of a game that has vampires in it. Emily and know. Sagan have not checked in. Emily and Sagan, I know you're watching. I know you know this game. Simon loves selling those big Kickstarter campaign games. Where hey, you at, Bradley? There is a Simon game I love. What's that? It's Lorenzo I mean, Magnifico. Even though, okay. Grant, they didn't. It was a reprint, but um, but I, sure. I do. I absolutely love that game. I'm a big fan of uh, Simone Luciani. Um, this one has a ton of minis wow, with Cajun vampires in yeah, it. Yeah, I don't. I I know like three or four. Like, didn't they? I think what they do, Blood Rage or something. Yeah, 
Okay. So, and that's, so, and but, that's what, but that's zombies, right? Isn't it? That's or no. Yeah, Blood Rage is Vikings. But I'll Vikings. tell you. Okay. So, See, that, that's how much I know about Simon games. So here's the clue for you and Chris Strain. Okay. Mm. The the key to this one is not the Simon part. It's the Cajun part. Okay. Cajun vampires. That's the key to the clue. Wow. Jesse, Jesse um, says he is stumped. He's got no. Well, I know. Idea. I know. Like I said, Don and I don't watch TV because we spend too much time playing games and making stuff. But I know I, there's a, a Cajun TV show about vampires. Jason, uh, you're working on a game whose name is very close to the game we're talking about here. In fact, the game that you're working on, the original name of those people is this game. Okay, so. I'm the original you name of the Acadians, right? So, so, um, mm, mm, mm. no, I'm trying to. Simon sells a big campaign game. This one has tons of minis. They just did one Cajun. with like Cthulhu or something. I know that. I know Cthulhu must die. That's Rob Davio and Eric right. Lane. Yeah. Donna said she's stumped. She's thinking zombies. Well, no, get off of the zombies. Because, because she and side. I, because she and I don't play any Simon games besides, like I said, Lorenzo. Um, like, like, not. I'm not. I will never bash a game. Jesse, I'm, I'm, Acadian Quest. Acadia um, Quest. <laughs> nice. Acadia Quest. Oh, because nice. there is a there is a, an Arcadia Quest. Is that or that's, no? That's the that's the Simon game. Okay. With the yeah. with the bomb part that now that one doesn't have Acadian, but good right. job, Jesse. Arcadian, Jesse's yeah. got it. Way to go, Jesse. Uh, have you have you met Jesse yet? No. Yeah, yeah, we met at the ALA Unpub yeah. event. I thought so because um, he had he had like two games, I believe. Uh, yeah, he had two games set up. He does graphic design. He's from Baton Rouge or that area, maybe Gonzales. Yeah, he's from Baton Rouge. Yeah, yeah. see, I remember Jesse. Oh, um, let's see. I only got one or two left. This which is one? Which is the one I'm going to do? Oh, I'd love to do this one, but I, I don't have a clue for it. Yeah, we 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 had a great one. Okay, here we go. I got just, two left for you. you, maybe three. Two left for you. Harold Lewski. you love Harold. He he did the cover that I've got right here, right? Harold, Harold Lewski, yeah. Yeah, Harold Lewski. Did you know that he painted this heavy game masterpiece about 18th century factories located smack dab? The factories, though, I bet you didn't know this. You've been playing this game for a long time. Did you know the factories were actually built between Tulane and Loyola University? You didn't know that. What game were we talking about? It's Arkwright, <laughs> but I'm trying to think of the... Um, <laughs> I knew oh, you did that. <laughs> what? I, hate, I hate driving in New Orleans, so <laughs> I, um, I, know spe- I, I, I love certain parts of New Orleans. I hate other parts of New Orleans. Not, not a fan of excessive alcoholism and sure, the fights sure. that go on on bourbon street because of it um <clears throat> but let's see so it's arc right so donna's um, got the game now yeah. donna where is the where are those factories they're located smack dab between tulane and loyola oh wow what is that green space right between tulane and loyola university come on jesse you know this one wow Still thinking? Oh, don't don't wait on me. It's gonna my like what I'm saying is my G. I know how to get to four places in New Orleans, so <laughs> I know specific streets and landmarks. Otherwise, I get lost real easy because, like I said, there's certain spaces that I love. All right, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give you a hint. I'm gonna give you a hint. It's all about those pictures of the birds. Pictures of the birds. Mm-hmm. Famous artist who did all those pictures of the birds. Does that help? Who did, who did those, who went to St. Francisville and, and there's a huge book. He did hundreds of birds, hundreds of birds. Oh, God. <laughs> you got to do this when my brain's not working. Uh. <laughs> Jesse says, I'm with Jason on my NOLA knowledge and the reasons for that. Yeah. Yeah. So most people don't remember New Orleans either because they stay away from some of that. Jesse's got the place. It's Audubon. Oh, Audubon. Oh. What's the name of the game? Audubon Wright. Audubon. Audubon Wright. Audubon. 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 Come on. It's, it's right there. Do. It's not the. 
Uh, it's right there. Tom uh, says it's Jackson Square. Show us that Jackson Square. Um, I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to call this one. Yeah, you're gonna have to. Yeah, it's Audubon Park, right? Oh, jeez. <laughs> It was right there. Yeah. No oh, hanging stupid. fruit. I, I feel stupider than I normally feel. Oh, oh that's okay. Man. You know what? Let's get back to your wheelhouse. How about a splatter spelling game? No, you, no pun intended there. <laughs> right. Right back to your wheelhouse. How yeah. about a splatter spelling game? All right. You, you know those games, right? I love splatter. Did yes. you know that one of the games, one, one that you talk about a lot, did you know that it's about the old way to travel between Baton Rouge and New Orleans? Just when you're on, when you're traveling, Make sure you watch out for the donkeys and the geese as you go down. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um, what game are we talking obviously, about? Obviously, it's roads and boats. Um, and wait, we're traveling between what? Because, like I said, I'm not, I'm, I'm not bringing the, real good right and now. And here's the key. Here's the clue for you, Jason. It's the old way to travel between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. That's the clue. That's what you no, got. That's not 10. On. No, 10 the new way. Um, the new way. Wait, 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 wait. It's, it's not airline. When 90 is the middle way. It's not what's airline. The, what's the old, even older than that? What's even the older old than airline way? highway? Yeah. Air, airline is highway 90, I think. Oh, right? does it? Yeah, I think it becomes 90. Yeah. yeah, okay. What's the old way to get from Baton Rouge to New Orleans? Old way to get from Baton Rouge to New Orleans. Jesse says lever. Oh, the levy. Yeah, levy. Levy, levy oh, roads. Jesse, levy roads. No, uh, he's so close. Levy roads and boats. It's, um, he's so close. Oh, geez. Ferry not, roads and boats? No, wait. Not wait, levy. Wait. It's not ferry. What is it? It's so oh. close. Man. <laughs> what is it, Jesse? What's that road in 182? No, not, that's that's a good one. I don't think that's it, uh, though. What's the what's the old way between Baton something, Rouge? And it's Orleans? obviously something road, and I can't think of it. It's, it's, not it's the road that follows the levee, but but it's got a name to it. It's not all right. So it's not airline highway. It's not. Um, oh, what's the other one? Jesse, it's right there behind LSU. Man, it goes you can take it right from LSU all the way. Yeah, remind me, Donna. Uh, remind me not to get you to drive in Dallas because I, I we're we're not going to get where we need to go there. <laughs> yeah, Donna's all over the place. But she's got some good. She's got some good guesses, though. Well, we, but 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 to be fair, when she and I travel in Louisiana, we have very specific routes we take. Ah. Like I said, we're we're very. She and I are very um, methodic, so we don't we don't go off the beaten path too much. We actually talked about doing that when as we get closer to retirement and we have more vacation days, just taking like a four day weekend and just driving to nowhere, Louisiana, and getting a motel and just going enjoying some small town going to the flea market or the thrift shop or whatever. We actually talked about just getting away, doing something like that because we don't, we normally, oh, and she hates big city. She got her, she got her driver's license in Colorado Springs, population 500,000, but she hates driving in big cities. Um, she will, <laughs> but only if she has to. Well, Jesse calling me out because he says, I don't know what it is, but the clue, I mean, the name, Levy Roads, Levy Roads and Ferry, and ferry Boats. boats. Yeah, that, you know that what is it is? Good. That is good. It's River Roads oh, and Boats. River Road, yeah. River Road, the old way to get there. The old yeah. way to get there. All right, let me see. I got two left, and then we're going to close this thing out. Uh, let me see this. <clears throat> Uwe Rosenberg, he's got to be one, one of your favorite game designers, we, right? We actually, uh, once a year, we have a Uwe week because we have um, 16 Uwe games. We only have 16 of his games right now. We need, we, we, there's more we, we need more. to get. And we just Did, all we do is play, play every one of them once each that week. Did you know that Uve loves strolling through this historic New Orleans neighborhood? But he likes to bring his cats and terracotta pots as his companion, of course. Okay. It's Cottage <laughs> Garden. Um... And, and, well, clue for Jesse, there's also, this neighborhood is also in Baton Rouge also. It's Cottage Garden. It's a New Orleans neighborhood. <laughs> um. Donna, because that's because y'all love Morgan City, and we focused on New Orleans here, but only because of the the game's themes that he's been doing with Crescent City Carpet. Yeah. Well, like I said, the parts of New Orleans I love, I go specifically to. Sure. So I know specific spots and places. Um, like we like to go like to Magazine Street, and just walk down Magazine Street to some of the little shops and stuff, little restaurants. And uh, so Donna's got the yeah, game. It's, it's Cottage Garden. I, when you said cats and terracotta pots. 
Yeah, um, and Jesse says, I know it. You just got to put it together. <laughs> Chris, Chris, that's what you need to do. You should have watched NCIS New Orleans because all of this stuff is in is in the show. My wife watches it every single weekend, and this is uh, this is all in the show. Oh, Jesse's got it. Cottage, Cottage Garden, Garden District. Oh, District. There you go. All right, let's finish on a big. Let's finish on a big one. This one I'll be surprised if you do not get. But let's, let's fin see. finish with me bombing. This is going to be a race to see who uh, who can get this one. I thought that's what they all were. <laughs> it's a, yeah, you're right. But this one's going to be a race. Jason, yes. this one is a surprisingly lively themed game. It's not yet out though, so I'm going to throw you a little kink toward you. It's not out yet. It's about shipping little tiny snails through the Port of Orleans. Crescent City Escargo. He's got it. He's got it. Yes. I had to get that one. I had to get that one. I told Steve we're going to finish with that one because if, if Jason doesn't get it right away, I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah, no, that would have been bad. It, no matter how tired I am, that would have been bad. That would have been a good one. Now, right. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't know as far as that game being out. Uh, I'll say, Uli asked to see um, to check it out um, when we met at the con in Denver, but he, uh, it, I wasn't ready for him to play it yet. It was only a month old, so I gave him like the quick ten minute, you know, demo, and he said, you know, he liked it. Told me the things he did like about it at the time, and then emailed me a week later and said, look, I want a shot at it when it's done. When you think it's ready, so. I felt that it was there uh, around September, made the PNP files and uh, sent it to him. He printed it up earlier this month, but told me he's going to evaluate. He's going to play test it, obviously, after Essen because he's so busy with all that. So sometime in November, he'll play it. But I'll, I'll say I'll say this. I design Spielworks games. I, I don't even if I don't try, that's what comes out of me. It's it's I mean, we play more Spielworks games than anything. We we, you know, um, and that's just. Spielworks games are the, the medium, uh, maybe a little heavier, um, you know, um, Euro games that aren't cookie cutter. They uh, sometimes they're a little quirky or rough around the edges. And I mean that in a good way. Um, they're they're you know, um, they can have appeal. Look at Lagrania. It's sold 60,000 copies, but but they're kind of niche. They, they really are, you know, in, in what they are. And um, so. Without trying, just my natural, just me designing, I design Spirits Games. So it, it definitely feels like a Spirits Games feels, you know, um, like as much as I love Captains of the Gulf, it, you know, it, I, I feel more, you know, even stronger about that, but um, about, about Crescent City. But I never count my chickens before they hatch. Uli could come back and say, he, you know, he doesn't, he, he did like what he saw, but he could say maybe he doesn't feel the game's a good fit for Spirits or whatever. It, I'm not one to pitch a game. And growing up, you know, in poverty the way I did, I, um, you know, I, I love to give things away, whether it's a dice tray or a, a card sure. stand or a game or whatever. My dream is, and I'm not saying I hope Uli doesn't sign it. I'm just saying, you know, there's, there's no guarantees. And, and if he doesn't want it, I'm not pitching it to anyone else. I'm going to put the files uh, on BGG because my dream is to make a, a publisher worthy game and then give it to the world for free and just say, here, enjoy it. You know, I really, really want to do that. One of, before you do that, though, if Uli says, I like the game, but I'm not sure that I, I'm into the theme, think just think about Little Snails and changing the name. <laughs> that, no, no I, um, the escargot could work, you know? U Uli didn't know this, but before he, when he asked for the game, before he, um, you know, before he, uh, he got, you know, uh, played it and offered me the contract, in the back of my head, I had already said, I don't care. He could offer me $2. I don't care. I, I don't money. I, like I said, I'm not rich by any means. Um, we work for the government. We don't make a lot of money, uh, Don and I. But uh, I grew up so poor that I don't care about money. If we have food and we have a house over our heads, I don't care about anything else. So that being the case, um, when, you know, the idea of him signing Captains of the Gulf originally, I said, I don't care about any dollar amount, but he can't change the theme. And, and, and I've really gotten that way. While, while I have less of a nostalgic you know, family tie to the Port of New Orleans as I do with Captains of the Gulf, that's, that, that's going to be with, with, with any of my Louisiana theme games. If a publisher wants them, theme is off the table. 
if you know if if uh, if you want to change the theme, then I just don't get paid for the game. I give it away for free. Hey, you if know, you're gonna do that, it. Jesse says he'll help you with the graphics and polish that thing up. So you guys need to hook that up would, and talk about that. I, I've seen I've seen some of Jesse's stuff. He he's well. I like to illustrate. <laughs> Jesse is is the a graphic, graphic designer. designer. Yeah. Way about that. That that's a skill set that I, I I can you know mess around in. I don't have his skill. You know. Well, this week for the uh, Jumbalaya game, I'm going to call uh, Jason the winner. He had four. Jesse had a couple. Chris Strain went Konoyo, as we say in Mamu. He went Konoyo. He had a big zero, but of course, <laughs> it was a pretty tough theme for him to do. But uh, Jason, thanks for being such a good sport in the Jumbalaya game. Uh, we got to give a hand to Steve O'Rourke for coming up with some great clues. Absolutely. Some, some great names. So, and, he, and he does this every week. So he had a two for this week. Uh, that was a pretty tough week for him. He was really working hard, especially w- with his Red Sox. Uh, and you said he's from series. Alaska, right? It's, it's I'm, I'm, some, jo- I'm joking. I'm joking. Keep going north. Alaska's, yeah, yeah. Alaska's too uh, close. He's somewhere. He lives with penguins or something New, like that? New York's. I think they do have penguins in New York City. I'm not sure. But one of these days we'll find out if he's still alive. So. All right, board gamers, that's it for another episode of Gumbo Live. I want to thank my guest, Jason Dinger. Jason, it's blowing up out there on uh, on at Essen Spiel with the with the captains of the Gulf. I know you're excited about it, and and so are we here at the Gumbo because you know we've seen it just develop from paper. Uh, if people want to get in touch with you and they want to talk to you about the game, or maybe they have a rules question, how do they get in touch with you? Uh, for rules questions, uh, I'm trying to be as active as possible on the BGG forums. Um, and, uh, I'm trying to answer those as quick as possible. Paulo Hinato, who is Rado's right-hand man. Sure. Um, he played captains of the Gulf at, uh, Lyricon, uh, Lyricon, excuse me, with Uli. And, That's in Portugal, right? In Portugal. Yes. Well, uh, one of these days you're going to have to go to that. And, and, and loved it and volunteered to go to Essen <clears throat> to help teach it. And he and I have been going back and forth. He's, I see why he's Rado's right-hand man. He, he is amazing. He uh, not not only I'm not just saying it because he loves my game, but just he's he's found little things where it's not it's not wrong, but it might be a little ambiguous because of the translation from German to English in the rule book. And um, so he's helped me identify spots where I go in in this in this FAQ and, uh, you know, uh, specify and clarify things. So I've got that going on in the rules form. People can ask if they want to find me on social media. It's Jason Dinger without the E. No, so just D I N G R Jason D I N G R. Um, I'm really active there. Uh, you're active on BGG. You're active on Twitter. You're active. I'm, I'm more Facebook. active. I'm more active on Twitter. I am active on Facebook, but Facebook is more for friends and family. I, yeah. I post a lot of stupid memes <laughs> and, uh, and because people, people on Twitter Fair don't one. know you. Yeah. People on Twitter don't know me. So I'll post stupid memes there, but I'll post memes on Facebook that make fun of everybody politically. Uh, I don't care what side you're on. If you do or say something stupid, I'm going to make fun of you. And um, I just know that people on the farthest reaches of either side, if I posted some of those on Twitter, would probably well, – well, in one night, I was actually called, called a uh, uh, SJW snowflake by one person uh, and, and a uh, fascist um, uh, bigot by someone else hey. uh, because of my haircut. That, that they said this is a fascist haircut. They knew nothing about me. What do so, I? What do I always call you? An equal opportunity offender, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and so, 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 what I'm saying is, I'm not not that I won't friend someone on. Uh, I kind of cringe when when a board game person friends me on Facebook. I'm like, I'm probably going to post something that's going to make you mad. Um, well, Twitter uh, they, is the best way. With Jason me. Dinger without the E, and of yes. course on BGG. You've been checking the forums pretty regularly because I've been seeing yes. you post on those. Make sure to like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash boardgamegumbo, because it helps us to get the word out for all of our upcoming guests and shows, including my good buddy and Steve's good buddy, Alex Goldsmith of Gray Fox Games and of the Dukes of Dice. He's coming on Tuesday. He'll be back from Essen, Jason. So I'm going to flat out ask him, was there, you know, was there buzz? Uh, what's the big games? And hopefully he mentions Captains of the Gulf. So well, I'll try to get in this, put, put that in. There's a lot of other games that were a lot. 1,200 games this year, man. Right, right. 1,200 games. Um, I'm BJ from Board Game Gumbo. And until next time, Jason, laissez le bon temps. Nice. I knew you'd catch that one. I was trying to get my timing right.